welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren, if you're new here. If you are, I hope you choose to stick around, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up. I am so excited to share this with you. So, quick recap before we jump into this What Eight in a Day, which my registered dietitian, Erin, is reviewing. I'm so excited. I'm a huge fan of the YouTube channel, Abby Sharp. She is a registered dietitian and she reviews very big YouTubers and celebrity diets. She watches through their What Eight in a Day videos and just gives general critique. It's not diet advice. It's not... Um, you know, telling them exactly what to do because she doesn't know them, but she just gives general advice, a little extra protein, you could sub this for this, etc. And I enjoy watching her videos. I pretty much have watched them all. I'm obsessed, but I thought that would be really fun to do with my registered dietitian. Um, obviously, we chat on a weekly basis, but she's not, you know, looking at images of what I'm eating for every single meal. She follows me on Instagram and we chat, but I thought this would be a really good opportunity for her to critique my daily diet. Um, I hit pretty close to the calories on this day and pretty close to the protein. So I'm looking forward to her suggestions and critiques on what I can improve on, where to add more protein, um, some new ideas maybe. I'm just really excited to see what she has to say. So huge thank you to Erin for joining me today, but it was actually Erin's idea to kind of give a quick recap of where I am in my health journey just to kind of keep you caught up how 2020 went and what my goals are for 2021. So I will quickly do that and then we'll jump in to the food and to Erin's review of my what eat in a day. So I, if you're brand new here, I did Weight Watchers. I started Weight Watchers back in 2016 and did it pretty consistently. Obviously I had off months, you know, maintenance months here and there, but I solely only did Weight Watchers from fall of 2016 through February of 2020. Um, and that's a really long time to be dieting in a calorie deficit, you know, that's a long time to be dieting. So I just kind of reached a point with Weight Watchers where I felt like I had to not do it like anything extreme, but I felt like I was just constantly, you know, chasing that next half pound, like anything I could do to just lose a little bit more on the scale. Um, I was filling my diet with a lot of sugar-free and fat-free items. I was chugging carbonated water in the afternoon at work just to try to stay full because I was running out of points. And I was very bad at eating. Once I ran out of points, I didn't turn to zero point foods, which is definitely what you should be doing. Um, and that is nobody's fault but my own, but it just wasn't my eating style. In my head, I've reached like the calories of the day. If my points are gone, I shouldn't eat anymore. And so with that, I was severely under eating. I say severely, I was under eating by a lot, um, anywhere from a thousand to barely 1200 calories in a day. I, that's just not enough for a grown woman of my size. I'm about five, four, um, 150 pounds. And I just needed to eat more. I was tired. I wasn't feeling good. And I just needed something different. So in comes Erin. Um, I was on the lookout for a registered dietitian, kind of on the hunt in my area, talked to a few people in my area to see if they took my insurance, etc. A friend actually recommended me. Hey, Barbie, she's here on YouTube too. I'll try to remember to link Barbie's channel for you. But she hooked me up with Erin and it has been just amazing ever since. We talked that first 30 minute free consult and we just got along really well and we ended up working together and I honestly wouldn't change a thing. So we started the reverse diet in about May. I quit Weight Watchers about February, mid-February 2020. Met Erin a couple months later and we started the reverse diet in May where I was slowly adding back in calories. I, I'd have to look back at videos and see where I started, but I want to say that first week or two my goal was to not eat under 1400 calories. So I was increasing um, off the bat by about two to 300 calories. And then from there, we slowly added either 50 calories or 100 calories per week. Some weeks we would stay the same, just depending on how I was feeling. Like if I hit my numbers that week, was I eating more? Was I eating a lot less than that target number? And she just sort of monitored my weekly, you know, day to day basis and adjusted me from there. And we slowly increased calories. I have actually not stepped on the scale since August, but from May to August, I only had one gain and I immediately lost it right after. So, um, right now after the holidays, I'm feeling a little fluffy. So I would say I've, I had probably had a gain, but I've yet to step on the scale. So I'm not sure, but all of my same clothes fit. I'm feeling really great. I have energy. I feel like my skin looks great. 
Um, I like the way I look at the mirror. I definitely want to get back to weight loss mode, which is where we're headed, just to kind of shave off those last few pounds that I was chasing back when I was on Weight Watchers. So now that we reverse dieted, which to recap that is just increasing calories, I got up to about 2,000 to 2,200 calories um, on a typical day, and that's what I'm currently eating with 130 grams of protein, and um, now we're going to slowly cut back in the coming months, and hopefully I'll lose a little bit of weight, and I'll be doing it at a much higher calorie range than I was. So we're back. I'm super excited. We're going to jump into weight loss mode. Again, thank you so much to Erin. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, let us know with a big thumbs up, comment down below, and maybe I can bring her back for another review my what I eat in a day in the future. So I think this is going to be really fun. Um, we're going to sort of rewind the clock to last week, and let me show you what I ate. Hi guys on Lauren's channel. I'm Erin. I am her registered dietitian. I work a lot with people from all over the country on things like gut health, weight loss, reverse dieting is huge, um, and overall just like improving healthy habits. So when Lauren came to me, um, she was doing Weight Watchers previously, she had stopped, and after kind of talking to her and looking at her diet and hearing her symptoms, it was clear that she had a problem that many people have. They weren't eating that much, their weight wasn't changing, and they weren't feeling great. Um, and so for her, we started the reverse diet. And there's some other videos that we did where we talk about it a little bit more, but basically the goal of the reverse diet is to tell your body that it's okay to eat food and to not be in this place of restrict, restrict, restrict. When we do that, our metabolism adapts, our hormones change, um, and a lot of other negative side effects happen. So by feeding yourself um, more, then you're able to start feeling better, your body's able to actually respond and have a normal um, response with that. It's kind of the the long story short of a reverse diet. But with Lauren, in the beginning, we were more strategic with it, right? So she was tracking calories every week. We were adding in 50 calories, 100 calories, some weeks, none at all. But doing it slowly and system systematically um, to try and help minimize any weight gain or any other complications. Um, so that's kind of what we did. And then most recently, we got her to a point where she was happy with her calorie intake. It was adequate for her needs. She's looking great, feeling great. And the holidays were here. So I usually like my clients to kind of take a break during the holidays. Obviously not go balls to the wall or just kind of, you know, not do anything. But I don't really want you tracking or being super restrictive because there is so many things to enjoy during the holidays. So for her, we had her do her maintenance phase, which is at the end of a reverse diet. And that is key. I cannot say this enough. After your reverse diet, you must maintain. Um, and that is what Lauren did. And so this video is kind of showing like the end of her maintenance where she's at the high end point of her calories. She's been there for a while and now she's ready to enter the weight loss phase. So unless you've done a proper reverse diet and a proper maintenance, which she did over the holidays, we were a little bit more lax. She's still eating plenty of calories, that sort of thing. Unless you've done those two things, do not move to step three for fat loss, okay? But in this video, I'm going to kind of go over her food choices, um, what I would recommend, and, and that sort of thing. So, let's get into it. Um, so it looked like she had coffee in the morning, which is great. Um, I do know Lauren and her food choices. And usually she puts a premier protein shake in her coffee. And that's really helpful to help her hit her calorie goals um, and her protein goals. And in my practice, I only give my clients calories and protein. I do not have them really monitor fat or carbohydrates. I want them to have some wiggle room. And the research shows time and time again, when calories and protein are controlled for, it doesn't matter if you have a high carb diet, low carb diet, high fat, low fat, any mixture in between. It's truly up to individual preference and it can be changed on a day-to-day -day basis. So for her, we have protein goals and calorie goals. So if you saw her cup of um, Joe, she it had like some cream in it. And I'm thinking that that was premier protein, if not, um, putting premier pro protein in your coffee is a really great way just to get more protein. Um, they have caramel color flavor, 
caramel flavor. Um, they have a new coffee one that they came out. I tried the vanilla one. Um, so that's a really great option to put something in your coffee and also kind of hold you over for a little bit longer. Oftentimes people, they will just have coffee in the morning. Okay, coffee is an appetite suppressant, right? So then they feel like they can go for hours and hours and hours without eating. Um, but then when it gets time for lunchtime or snack time for Lauren, you're starving and that's when it's really easy to kind of overeat or whatever, maybe not make the best choices. So doing some kind of protein the first thing in the morning or with your breakfast is huge. Searching for something that ain't lost. Okay, so her breakfast, she's eating it a little bit later, um, but she did have something for breakfast like in the morning, like I mentioned. But breakfast, she has her low carb tortilla, eggs, peppers and onions, veggie sausage, and she has the almond milk creamer, right? She's almond milk, not um, premier protein, which is something I would recommend she changes. I know she's done it before. Um, but this breakfast looks great, right? So it has good protein in there with the egg and the sausage patty. She's using a veggie sausage patty, which I have many clients that are vegetarian, totally fine. But make sure that if you have a meat alternative, that it still has good protein, um, whether it has lentils in it, whether it's soy, something else in there that has good protein, or else you're really missing out on a good nutrient. And the reason I'm harping so much on protein already um, is because so many people under eat protein. I see it in 99.9% .9 of my clients when they first come to me. And so that's why I focus on it and I give my clients um, resources and like really have them, like I said, focus on protein and calories because that is one of the most important nutrients. So um, for her, she's done great at adding protein in her breakfast, which is a change from what she was made before um, or from when she was on Weight Watchers. But I love it. She has good carbs with the tortilla, protein with the egg and sausage, and then some veggies in there, which is awesome. It ain't lost. Have we got our lines crossed? We're wasting time with stuff that doesn't really matter. While wishing for something better. Okay, so uh, her lunch. So she had did a meal prep, which I love. I think if you work in an office or even myself, I work from home, doing some kind of meal prep helps you make sure you're eating lunch for one, um, because I know how busy it can be to kind of get in the swing of things and then you miss lunch. But if you have something meal prepped, it can be a huge help. And I'm not a huge cook in the kitchen. So I use my Instapot, I use frozen veggies, frozen meats, pre-cooked rices, like really simple things and throw them together. And that makes all the difference. So it doesn't have to be this like meal prep all Sunday long, spend four hours in the kitchen. You can cut corners, like do whatever works best for you, but having something, um, even if it's just ingredients or chicken already cooked, that can be a big help. As far as Lauren's meal goes, um, because we reverse dieted her and she has, she needs to get a lot of calories in. She did have a lot of meat in that meal and a lot of rice in that meal, moderate veggies. As we enter into the fat loss phase, I still want her having a big lunch. I want her having a good size lunch to keep her full, to have good volume. Um, we're going to keep the carbs in there. We're obviously going to keep the protein in there, but I would probably tell her to increase the veggies a little bit and then drop the carbohydrates slightly. So what it may look like in her container would be she would put the stir fry veggies and the meat in the big part and then put the rice in the two smaller parts. So just kind of switching that. She's still getting a ton of volume, um, but now that we are entering kind of more of the diet mode, she doesn't eat as many carbohydrates, uh, but she'll still get some through that rice. Next up, we'll see her snacks for her workday. And words unspoken, we fall apart and I won't dare to say spread her snacks out like a few hours. Some people, they want to do it all in one sitting. Um, some people prefer to spread it out. No way's wrong. So this way works great. Um, and because she was able to get good protein in that yogurt, she's going to meet her protein goals. So you can see here that whole snack had 12 grams of protein, 33 carbs, and 15 grams of fat. Perfect. That's pretty well balanced. 300 calorie range is awesome. So I love it.
I'm just gonna comment on the wine um, because a lot of people come to me thinking I'm gonna tell them not to have wine. They don't wanna tell me when they have wine. I'm more of a margarita girl myself, um, but alcohol can fit into your diet regardless of your goals. You kind of have to manipulate it in a few different ways if, um, you know, you don't want to drink all your calories, but at the same point, you don't want to be at a place where you can't be drinking after a day if you want or, or that sort of thing. So everybody's different with alcohol. That's something that I work on um, with a lot of my clients, but it isn't a no-no um, by any means. It's just something that you have to be aware of. Okay, y'all, tonight we're making Cajun rice with andouille sausage in the Instant Pot, and I'm really excited. So let me show you we're gonna need so they said basmati rice. This is the only white rice I have. It's just a long grain white rice. So that's what I'm going to be using. And you're also going to need some andouille sausage. I didn't like anything close to me. I don't know why. We're using an andouille chicken sausage just from our local grocery store, H-E-B. It calls for um, like an onion and celery, I think. But I am just going to use about half the bag of the seasoning blend. Um, this is basically like a mirepoix. It's got onion, carrot, and celery already in it. So I'm just gonna use that as my seasoning. I am gonna use probably one carrot, maybe two. We'll see how much this one cuts up. And it also said three rumpa tomatoes, um, but one of ours disappeared. So now we have two and that'll be just fine. The only other thing you're gonna need is some Cajun seasoning. We're using Tony Satchery's Creole, one of our favorites. And this should be pretty easy. You basically chop your veggies, throw everything in a pot, stir it, and put the lid on. So fingers crossed, this is only like the second thing I've made in the Instant Pot, so we'll see how it goes. If we don't feel the same way, then don't pretend that everything's okay. Don't string me along the way you do. Just let me get Okay, y'all, so we did the manual pressure um, or the manual setting for five minutes. I'm a little bit confused on the Instant Pot because I feel like everyone's like, oh, it takes five minutes to cook. No, you put it on five minutes and then it builds the pressure. So really it took about mm, almost 20 minutes also to release the steam, which I think we were supposed to let it do it naturally. But we did the quick release where you just turn the knob and let it come out before you open it. So... I don't know, but we, I did try the rice just to make sure it wasn't messed up and it's cooked. So I feel like the quick release is just fine and it looks really good. Oops. Looks so good. I'm very excited. I actually already tried the rice because I wanted to make sure it was cooked and I mean, it tastes pretty dang good. So I'm very excited. I'm excited for Morgan to try this and we will give y'all a little review on it. Okay, so I'm gonna comment on this. So I got an Instapot recently, um, or like an Insta-like pot, I guess. And yes, it doesn't, the, when the recipe says 20 minutes of cook time, it doesn't account for the time that it takes to build the pressure. So make sure you remember that when cooking, but it is way faster than like a pressure or than a, it is a pressure cooker, than a crock pot um, or cooking on the stove. So for like easy family meals, one pot stuff, this is incredible. Um, I will say that I love that there is a veggie, a carb, and a protein in this meal. Those are kind of all the 
components of a meal. Um, you get fat in there from the sausage in, on this case. Some people may put butter on it to get a little bit more fatty. Um, this probably wouldn't be good with avocado, but some, you know, you could always add avocado or some other kind of healthy fat in there. Um, but I do love all the components of this meal. I love that it was quick. I love that it was easy. Um, I will say that I think there could be more veggies in here. I'm happy she used that second carrot. Um, but I would bulk up more veggies. So I personally would have probably opened up another package of just like frozen veggies and threw them in there. Maybe done cauliflower rice that blends in with the rice well, or done maybe zucchini would have worked well in here because it's a little bit harder. You could do asparagus chopped up in here. Um, she could have just doubled like the done more onions and carrots and that kind of thing. When making a meal and especially dinner, because dinner is a great easy way to get veggies in, it should be about half to 30% vegetables. Um, that's kind of my standard recommendation. Again, it depends on your goals, but half to 30% veggies. And the other part is made up by carb and protein. Um, and then some fat kind of mixed in there. So that would be my critique is to add more veggies in for a meal like this thinking, you know, when you're looking at a meal and it's blended like this, it's kind of hard to tell, but like, is this meal half veggies? Is this meal 30% veggies at least? That kind of thing, but looks delicious. Okay, here is the final product. I'm really excited to give this a try. We'll do a little taste test. Okay, about to try it. It's gonna be hot. Let me try the rice first. It's perfect. Mmm. Yeah. Really good. This is very good. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Wow. This is like the Zatarain's jambalaya kind of. Yeah. It really and is we good. love that. We love that stuff. And this is like a healthier version. Okay, what would you rate it? Yeah, it is like that. It's like that with all, with all the sodium. Right? It's so good. Yeah. Very similar. Just very hot. What would you rate it? I'm going to go 10 out of 10. Yeah. Like, so good. I would eat this once a week. Yeah, absolutely. 10 out of 10. Delicious. I also feel like you can really, um, I think next time I would add, like, red bell pepper. I just personally like that in, like, my Cajun dishes, but obsessed. Mm. Mm-hmm. I am Zatarans. <laughs> Saturn's 2.0. Highly recommend, you guys. It is so delicious. So we got a 10 out of 10 from the Cajun himself. <laughs> the Louisiana boy. He would know. Okay, so that is dinner. You guys have to try this one if you have an instant pot. So delicious. I will try to, um, I'll link this recipe. It's just a, one I found on Pinterest. They might have different cooking times. But that's all for today. I'm going to have a little bit, well, I'm just going to finish my wine, have this, and I think I'm done eating for the day. So thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below what your favorite. So she did a wonderful job this day. Um, she ate three solid meals, which is, I think it's pretty important. Um, some people, they do like two meals. Some people like four meals. Um, but for her, as her dietitian, I know three meals works best for her. It keeps her satisfied. It makes sure that she gets her calories in, makes sure she gets her protein in, her fiber, all of her nutrients. Um, and then she had her big snack like between lunch and dinner during the day, which I would say is a pretty standard kind of formula for most people, right? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, at least one snack, maybe two. She got good protein in this day um, because she did have protein at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all her main meals, and then her snack, that yogurt had good protein. Um, the other thing that I will say is I would like to see more veggies in her diet. Um, so she could have had more veggies for breakfast in that, uh, what do you call it? The wrap that she had, like the veggie wrap um, or the egg wrap. And then lunch, like I talked about, especially if she enters more of a weight loss focus goal, doing more veggies in the bigger section. And then dinner, bulking up, just chopping more veggies and throwing it in there. 
Another good way to get veggies is add them in your snack. So carrot sticks, cucumber, sugar snap peas, bell pepper, dipped in hummus on their own, dipped in ranch, whatever floats your boat. Um, but getting some more veggies in that way is also great. My favorite instant pot recipe is if you have one or do you have a crock pot recipe? Do you have a sheet pan recipe? Anything you'd like me to try. I'm always looking for new recipes and I would love to try some of your favorites. So let me know. We're going to finish dinner and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye y'all. All right. That's a wrap for Lauren's day of eating. Um, I'm excited for her 2021 to kind of continue working on goals with her. Um, and if you are somebody that is struggling with kind of understanding what's right for you, everybody's different. I highly recommend working with a dietitian. Um, she can link below my practice and you can kind of reach out to work with myself or one of our dietitians on the team. And that's all I got. I hope you guys like this video. We'll see you at the next one.